In this video we're going to be taking a look at General Grievous for the Legacy Collection and we're also going to be taking a look at the pre-Cyborg Grievous and gen two General Grievous uh, two-pack that was a Toys R Us exclusive back around 2010 or so. So it's about time I got General Grievous reviewed on the channel. This will be the first video of him that I have featured, similar to Count Dooku, where it's about time we finally get him on. Very important character. Character I really like and uh, I think is a great part of the Star Wars universe. And I have several General Grievous action figures and it's about time to start showing them off. And personally, I think the Legacy Collection Grievous, both of these two here, it's the best 3 3 quarter inch Grievous that we've gotten to date. I like it even more than the TBC Grievous, which I'll touch on that between this review and when I finally do review the TBC Grievous. For the most part, they're basically the same exact action figure, other than a few differences between the two that I think are significant enough that it changes the action figures enough to where they're almost completely different action figures. Uh, the TBC Grievous is nice for some things, and I'll point that out in that review. Uh, but without adding anything further, so I don't have the packaging here to show you, but if you recall, so this Grievous on the right here is the single pack from the Legacy Collection, and this was during the time it was that blue and white packaging. I believe it was a clone trooper head that it was molded to in the background for the package. And that was uh, around 2009, and it also came out in the same wave as like Stasa Lee, Bail Organa, Brianna Organa, Commander Fey, and there may have been a few other ones in that wave as well. So that Grievous came out in that wave, and then this two pack here, which are these two action figures, like I mentioned, was a Toys R Us exclusive. And there was also other two packs that were somewhat similar. I think there was a small Boba Fett to a, an adult Boba Fett, or the kid Boba Fett to adult Boba Fett. And uh, the, there may have been Anakin the Vader as well. Basically, they were just repacked action figures put in the two, uh, two pack. So the pre Cyborg Grievous in the middle here, that was originally released in the 30th anniversary line. And as far as I know, it's the same exact action figure that you're seeing here compared to that one, other than uh, the repack here did not include the coin. So if I ever want to add the pre-cyborg Grievous coin to my coin album, I'll either just have to get the coin by itself or buy an all-new action figure. Chances are I'll probably end up just getting the coin at some point in the future. But this is a great action figure as well. The pre-cyborg Grievous is really unique and has a lot of great parts to it. Uh, so where do we start? I guess we'll start from the beginning of what General Grievous once was. So I'm drawing a blank exactly what Grievous' species it was. I know it starts with a K. It was like Kadish or something along those lines. I know I'm probably saying it wrong. Uh, and then I understand that he was in a, like a dogfight between two starfighters and he may have had a crash. And of course it ruined him and then he ended up becoming the cyborg that we know him as. So, so as you can see, it looks like he kind of has a bone mask on with a... Uh, covering all around that. And of course he can't take his mask off here. And it can be a little tricky because you have to get around these two parts around his face there. Totally not what you expect General Grievous or what Grievous would become or what he ends up looking like before he becomes a cyborg. Very nice paint detailing, great sculpting work. Looks like he has his bandolier on, which is removable as well. You would have to pop the head off to take that off, 
but underneath all it is is just basically rag clothing with some weathering. And it's easy enough to put his mask back on. It's kind of hard to line it up with his eyes, so you can't really see his eyes outside of his mask very well. And he does have this cape, which has his uh, symbol on that we see at the back of his uh, cyborg cape with the red and the gray. And we do see it on the TVC action figure, which I'll just bring him out right now. Show him off a little bit. No, oh, General Grievous is a hard one to get to stand. At least the TBC one is. But it has some weathering. It has some holes through it. Like it's seen some action. Then he just has this loincloth here. For the front and the back. Then exposed legs with some wrappings around his feet and his ankles. So in terms of articulation, he does have a ball joint at the head. A little bit restricted because of that hair and ponytail he has. That's not too big of a deal. Now he does have hinged shoulders. Then... Yeah, no articulation in the elbows, interestingly enough. Yeah. But he does have swivel forearms, though. And he does have a swivel waist, and then swivel hips, and hinged knees, and no articulation in the ankles. Would have been nice if he had hinged elbows or even swivel elbows. Would have been okay enough. But he does not. In terms of weapons and accessories, comes with, kind of looks like a harpoon a little bit. This is his rifle, has some nice detailing in it, with the wrappings. And does have the strap. Then he also comes with the sword here. does have a sheave on the back of his bandolier and cape there. And this looks really nice as well. And it fits good in his hand. Thankfully the, it has the guard on it where it can wrap around his fingers there. So he can hold it like that. So that's the pre-cyborg Grievous. He does not come with a stand. I just happen to have a stand for him. And I would recommend having a stand for him because he does have a little bit of an awkward stance with the lack of the ankle articulation and the way his legs are bowed out. So stand is recommended. So this General Grievous on the left here, once he becomes a cyborg, this is the one that came with that pack here. There are some differences between the Legacy Collection one and this one, at least from my sample. So you can see how the dirt is applied is a little bit different. And this is part of the reason why I think the Legacy Collection one is better, because I just really like how the weathering is applied to Grievous here. The TVC one has that bone color to it, and it doesn't really have a lot of weathering at all. I think General Grievous looks a whole lot better with some weathering. The only real downside about this action figure that the TBC one has a plus one on is the cape. But even without a cape, I think he's perfectly fine.
So at some point I will do a comparison between the Revenge of the Sith era Grievouses and then the Legacy and TBC ones. And there is a huge difference between the two. In fact, uh, this General Grievous is much more proportional to his height. Uh, I'll just even include a Super Battle Droid here. As you can see, huge difference between the two. And the Super Battle Droid is not exactly a short action figure. I'll just bring out like Palpatine for instance. Huge difference. So his legs do feel a little fragile, slightly gummy. It hasn't been much of a problem for mine, but it is one thing to watch out for, and it does kind of affect his stability. Thankfully, the legs on both the samples I have are not bowed out. Unlike the TBC Grievous I have, the legs are bowed out, so if it's been in the package for many years and you're just now getting this, chances are his legs might be conform to the package and then you might be doing something weird like that and then you're going to have a hard time standing him and you can't put a stand on him because he doesn't have any pick holes in his feet so you might need to do some sticky tack or something like that for him so in terms of articulation he does have a Joint at the neck, great range of motion. Does have hinged shoulders and hinged elbows for all four of his arms. And then he does have a swivel wrist. Well, actually, I don't think this one has a swivel wrist. Or yes, or swivel forearms, I should say. The TBC one does have swivel wrists and swivel forearms, so I suppose that's one plus. Uh, he does have a swivel waist, I suppose. It's not really a, a joint or a... Yeah, it's not much of a joint. It's just a swivel. And he does have swivel hips. And then a double joint at the knee. Which for a 3 and 3 quarter inch action figure was a pretty rare thing at the time. So that's really nice. Then he does have hinged ankles. So really good articulation. And as I mentioned, he does have four arms. I think this was the first Grievous we really got where the arms could be locked together and separated. The Revenge of the Sith Grievous just had the four arms and they never could lock together. So I'm pretty sure this is the very first one. Normally I do keep the arms locked together and the reason being is because he doesn't hold his lightsabers too well if you don't kind of loose in the place like that but it does look really nice and if you do have some spare lightsabers lying around you can give them four and speaking of accessories it just comes with the two lightsabers that you see here nothing really fancy about those hilts at all I'm pretty sure we've seen these on numerous action figures before and the blades are not removable. Then he also does come with his droid blaster. And both Grievouses come with the same exact accessories. And he can hold it in his hand pretty good. looks nice and like I mentioned the single release for the legacy collection basically the same exact action figure other than the at least for my samples there is applied a lot different as you can see he has a lot more weathering on his head there and I think that looks really cool it gives Grievous more of that evil look about him it makes his eyes stand out a lot more. 
Other than that, same exact action figure. I don't think the weathering is really much different on the body. And same exact accessories. And that's why I keep the arms together is because you can have that extra support. Although it is kind of hard to get the arms to completely lock in together. As you can see, they have those two pins there. And they are supposed to lock into the arm there. There are two holes on this arm. But if you want him to hold the lightsabers together, it doesn't usually work out too well. In fact, I'll just show you what it would look like. And you can only keep the arm straight. So something like that. If you tried to bend the arms, then obviously it wouldn't stay in place. Maybe someday if Hasbro makes a brand new General Grievous from the ground up, they can see if they can do articulated arms where they are locked in together. I imagine that would be a lot of engineering on Hasbro's part. And it might not be possible, but it would be nice if they tried. And I'll just bring the TVC Grievous out here real quick to compare them. And you can kind of see what I mean about the paint. And the legs on mine are really bowed out. And he has a hard time standing. He's just leaning against that pre cyborg Grievous right now. But he does have the cape, which is really nice. And that was the whole reason why I went ahead and got this uh, TVC Grievous. So I've had this Legacy Collection one, the uh, single card release, since the very beginning that he was released back in 2009. And I did get this uh, pre-cyborg Grievous to General Grievous to pack for uh, either Christmas or one of my birthdays. And it was around 2010, I think. Other than that, I think that's all I can tell you about these pre-Cyborg Grievous and General Grievous action figures. Would I recommend them for your collection? I totally would. If you can only have one General Grievous for your collection, this is the one I would get. Even above the TBC one. Especially above the TBC one because that one's extremely expensive and hard to get. Uh, this Legacy Collection one's not exactly on the cheap side either, but it's definitely far cheaper compared to the TBC figure. And he looks nice. I love how the weathering is applied on him. The dirt looks great. Especially on his mask there. And it's just a solid action figure. The height is proportioned accurately. He looks intimidating. It's a fantastic action figure. And it had a lot of innovative features at the time. Even if budget is a concern for you. I would still try to hunt this one down if possible. You might be able to find him in the 30 or 40 dollar range if you're lucky uh, and at this point i have been checking the prices on the revenge of sith general grievous the very first one and even that one's kind of getting expensive um if you get one brand new i've seen a lot of the prices go for like 20 dollars so personally i think if this one's in the 30 or 40 dollar range you should just go out of your way to go ahead and spend a little bit of extra money and get the best Grievous and three three quarter inch form that we got. So anyways that concludes this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for more reviews in the future. There will be lots more to come. And if you have not already please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate your support. Check out some of the links in the description as well. Thanks for watching.